Good afternoon. My name is Marcus. Today we're going to be going over aviation, aviation physiology. Who here gets car sick? <clears throat> Can you imagine trying to fly? Ah, I see one of you. Can you imagine trying to fly if you're feeling the effects of motion sickness? Do you think you'd be able to fly as well as you normally do? Today we're going to discuss the causes and symptoms of different physiological conditions. First, we're going to talk about spatial disorientation. This occurs when there is a conflict between signals relayed by your central vision and information provided by your peripheral vision. Imagine uh, if you're sitting in an airplane and you are <clears throat> waiting to back away from the uh, terminal, but another aircraft next to you starts to back away first. Your peripheral is going to think that you are moving forward. Does this never happen to anybody? Good, you, you have experienced it. Okay. Next is uh, vestibular orientation. The vestibular system is located inside of your inner ear. It relies on fluid flowing over the tiny hairs in your colloquial tubes. These tiny hairs sense the movement of the fluid flowing as your head makes as your head turns. So as I do this, the fluid is then flowing over the hairs and the hairs are moving which then sends the uh, functions to the brain that registers that, okay, I am moving. These hairs can give incorrect senses, however. <clears throat> Imagine if you're flying straight and level. Then you enter a 360 degree turn. As you enter the turn, well first, as you're flying straight and level, your, uh, the fluid in the canals will be stagnant and the hairs won't register anything. As you enter the turn, the fluid will then flow over the hairs, cause them to lay down, which then your brain picks up as a turn. If you were to come out of the, uh, out of the turn and proceed to fly straight and level again, what's going to happen is after time, if you stay in that turn long enough, the fluid will then become stagnant and the hairs will stand up again. So as you come out of the turn, <clears throat> you, uh, the fluid will then flow the other way and the hairs will then go the opposite way. And so even if you are flying straight and level, what's going to happen is your brain is going to interpret that as a turn in the opposite direction and then you're going to want to turn back to correct that. <clears throat> The, uh, the best way to overcome this is to focus on the horizon. If you're flying IFR, you must rely solely on the instruments. Next, we're going to discuss hypoxia. Hypoxia occurs when the tissues in the body do not receive enough oxygen. This can cause you to pass out, which obviously is going to lead to your death. A few symptoms of hypoxia as uh, blue lips, numb fingers, degraded motor skills, and or a feeling of euphoria. <clears throat> there are four types of hypoxia. It's hypoxic, which is an inadequate supply of oxygen, and this is generally caused by flying at high altitudes. Hypemic hypoxia is the inability of the blood to carry oxygen. This is most dangerous to uh, general aviation pilots and anybody who flies in small piston-powered aircraft. Uh, and this is because our carb, our uh, cabin heat is, it comes off of the exhaust shroud, it pulls air in, runs it over the exhaust, which then comes into the, that, the exhaust heats it, and that comes into the cabin to heat the cabin. If there's any cracks in the exhaust, <clears throat> that carbon dioxide will then get sucked into the cabin and you'll breathe it. <clears throat> the next type is stagnant hypoxia. This is caused by inadequate circulation of the blood and is generally caused by a heart problem or constricted artery. Histotoxic hypoxia is the inability of cells to effectively use oxygen. Alcohol is the most common contributor to this. Even small amounts of oxygen can affect your cell's ability to carry the oxygen. Does anybody here know what the uh, legal limit is um, for alcohol in your system if you're flying? Nobody? 0.40? 0.04. Nice try. 
<clears throat> Next, we're going to talk about uh, hyperventilation. Hyperventilation is when too much carbon dioxide has been eliminated from the body. This is generally caused by heavy breathing. We've all seen it in TV when uh, somebody is hyperventilating. It's generally <sighs> doing that, and what you're doing is just forcing carbon dioxide out of your system, and you must have enough in there to counter the uh, to counter the oxygen. Too much oxygen is not a good thing. <clears throat> Hyperventilation is generally caused by fear or anxiety. To fix the uh, or not fix to recover from hyperventilation, uh, you need to slow your breathing rate. You can do this either by talking aloud or breathing into a paper bag. <clears throat> Next thing we're going to cover is the I'm safe model. The I'm safe model is something you should take into consideration each and every time before you fly. I'm safe. First, I stands for illness. How are you feeling? Do you have a cold, flu, anything that's going to affect you negatively? Uh, <clears throat> a major one for pilots is a uh, sinus sinus blockage. If you have a sinus blockage, what will happen is the uh, pressure change as you climb in altitude will not, real, or your sinuses will not change with it and you can uh, rupture your sinuses then. Very painful. Do not fly if you have a sinus blockage. Next, medication. Are you taking any medication that uh, will affect you when you're flying? Generally, any medication that says do not take this medication if you're, or do not operate heavy machinery while taking this medication, same goes with flying an aircraft. Do not take any medication or fly on any medication that's going to affect you. Stress. Stress can be just as dangerous as anything else. When we're flying, we need to be able to concentrate on what we're doing. If you have a lot of stress in your life, whether it be family or money or anything, you obviously cannot give your full attention to flying the aircraft. Alcohol. We've already discussed this a little bit. Again, 0 .04 is the legal limit. <clears throat> I don't recommend even being at a 0 .01. However, the FAA does say 0 .04 is legal. <clears throat> Remember the old adage, eight hours bottle to throttle. Next is fatigue. Have you been, did you get enough sleep last night? Are you going to be exhausted while you're, uh, while you're flying the aircraft? Being exhausted can be just as bad as if you're drinking. Next, eating. You're not going to be able to perform, the, or perform well if you're starving. You need to get something into your stomach and so you're not concentrating on that. You can concentrate on flying the aircraft. All right, I want to thank you for your time. If you'd, want to, if you'd like to learn more about aviation physiology, and I highly suggest you do, I recommend reading Chapter 1 of the Jepson, Jepson Instrument Commercial Textbook. It is a great learning, great thing to read for all aspects of aviation. I learned much about the aviation physiology out of this book. Thank you.